Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. I have the incredible honor of introducing iconic actress, singer Jolie Fisher. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, good show. morning. We'll get in the traffic early uh, in the morning. It's a Monday. <laughs> we brought you special coffee, so there's I'm, that. I'm, I'm here. I'm here for the day. <laughs> are you worn out like us from all the shopping yesterday? That was great fun, stop, right? right? You know, sometimes one. they're a little bit like, you know, it's like, Here's a sample of this. These it was were good. Like, I got a beautiful bag and <laughs> know, some shoes. Right? And, oh, yeah, was this was next level. I mean, there is a whole week's worth of preparation. What's it like for you? I mean, what's, what do you do to stay balanced in all of this? I actually have a big weekend. I'm doing also the Brit Week Shakespeare Jubilee at the Wallace Annenberg on Saturday night with my <laughs> co-host, Yoan wow. Gruffin, and we're Nigel Lithgow, and we're doing Shakespeare all night and singing and carrying on. And um, we do that every year. And um, and then I go for my on-camera rehearsal for the first time, and it's very interesting because it's um, you know it's a different it's a different mindset. I have to remember when when I'm on camera and when I'm not, and the song means so much to me. And um, you know it is very on the nose. It's about losing people in in our lives, and um, it has been a bit of a, a, tra a journey for me and with loss and tragedy mm -hmm. in the past year. So I'm sort of moving through it gracefully and using my creativity to, um, you know, to sort of get through all of that. Today. Has music been very healing for you during this time? You know what's so funny? I was with my daughter yesterday at that gifting suite and my 12 year old True, and we were in the car and she said, she was playing music that I had never heard. And she was like, do you like this? Do you like this? And she goes, mommy, I just don't know what I would do if there wasn't music. Aww. And I was just like, oh my God, I did my job. Because <laughs> 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 we play so many different things. They're like, Alexa, play Hamilton. Oh. Do you <laughs> <laughs> we cook in the kitchen and we listen to all kinds of things. And my youngest daughter, Luna, who's nine, um, recently was like, do you know the song Rock and Roll by the Beatles? And I was like, oh my oh God. My God. God. <laughs> so That's she's hilarious. playing that. I've got Broadway <laughs> show tunes over here. And, you know. oh, hashtag mom goals right <laughs> yes. here. So you what do you look forward to most? It's Sunday, daytime. What is it that you look forward to? I'm in awe of it. I mean, I um, it's people that I respect and that I've, you know, that I've only come in contact with here and there. And then there are some of those icon iconic people that you know that we're honoring and I just it's a it's a great way to to celebrate the people of television I mean awards I have a love-hate thing with award shows I really right. do like mm -hmm. I'd rather like eat cheese in mismatch <laughs> and like ugly cry at the immemorium and like cheer and stand up with the people that I love but I mean, to celebrate the year's best performances in any, um, you know, in movies or television or anything is just, it's a lovely thing to be a part of. For sure. Yeah. Such an honor. When you were a little girl, did you imagine being in a place like this in your life? Absolutely. You did? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So you like visualized it? Yeah. Speaking of. I came out singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah. you have mala beads on. Will you tell us a little bit about your practice? You know what? I am, I, I have like, I'm, I'm not mad at jewelry as you can see. <laughs> um, I, I have also this other great necklace that has like, um, just all different things. And whenever anybody says, Oh, I love your jewelry. I say it's my stories. Mm -hmm. And so I do, I've traveled, you know, all over the world. I just, um, you know, I'm sort of fickle sometimes with my practice, but I have just started getting back into my spirituality, having lost my sister Carrie. Mm. And, um, you know, I grew up in a business where, and in this town where we are constantly watched and under scrutiny and, and having to compare yourself to other people. I have five children. I have a marriage of 21 years. So I think I have like an anomaly in this business. Right. And, and I really um, try to focus on that and what's important, even though I love what I do. And, um, and it does make me a better mother and a better wife and a better woman to be able to be creative. Um, I think that in the end, like those are the people that are going to celebrate me and support me and, and I back reciprocating. So impressive. So your spiritual practice is many things, but mostly just living what you care about and what you value. I just created this amazing meditation altar in my home and we got a new puppy and she went and peed all over. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this and I was like, I was like, this brought me back to reality <laughs> so heavily. That's hilarious. That's funny. That's like the universe is like, yeah, you think you got this one? I'm gonna show you. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Speaking of reality, I recently saw a new episode of Montex. Oh, yes. And you were a guest on their show right here at Focus TV. You know, I, those ladies are my friends um, and truly my friends from childhood. Wendy Brokaw and I went to high school together. Her father was my mother's agent and she interviewed me in the Beverly Hills High School like studio for, she was a li oh little God. younger than me. It was my first inter her first interview. And we sat here and we bitched about politics. <laughs> and, and you can say whatever you want. Um, because we all are very vocal. We, you know, they are, especially now they have a show to talk about it too. But um, yeah, I got to speak my mind. I got to mm -hmm. do it. Good, we and like that. you've spoke your mind in this book. I did. I kind of, um, I wrote something in The Hollywood Reporter about losing my sister Perry. And I got um, this amazing offer to to do a whole book mm -hmm. and it's not a book about her it's a book about growing up with eddie fisher as my mm -hmm. father and or sometimes not so much as my father and connie stevens my mom and and her health and her um the the way that she paved for me and um growing up as a female in the world and empowering three daughters to find who they are and and what makes them tick mm -hmm. and so speaking yeah. of what yes. is what is your feeling on times up and me too any you how you said you got to speak your truth so you know we're just curious to know what is your truth what do you think what are your thoughts well on my particular thing is that there i do have a story in here that's my that's my um, me too moment and uh, you know i there's no sense in like re-victimizing mm -hmm. victims of that i think if it, it does empower you to be able to say that this that this happened to you and it is amazing that we finally are uh, have the the forum to do it and that people are galvanized enough to be able to say that 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 it was not okay and you know I, my personal thing is that i spent 30 years in television playing the sexy girl mm -hmm. so i always had like all the cleavage and you know i had the sassy lines and all of that that is not an invitation as well. When you're the woman who is playing the role that's supposed to be the, you know, the broad or whatever, it is, um, you know, I had many experiences on a set where people automatically say, oh, look, she's showing more than everybody else. It must be okay to touch. And it's absolutely not. Mm, interesting. It's a fascinating thing. We just, you know, we just believe in conscious conversation. And really, I think that, uh, you know, everyone has their opinions, and I think as long as we keep the conversation going is the most important thing. So I really appreciate all your movement. As you're like the most empowered woman ever, look at all your work that your mom I don't know about that. A singer. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive. It is. It's touching. I, I love what you say here. It's a book of musings, memories, and misadventures. Yeah, there's some dark in there. There's some dark. And there's some amazing things that I feel like I've come through and I don't want anybody to ever think, you know, who does she think she is? She was born with a silver spoon. I, in ways, very much was. And in other ways, I had to fight battles and fight, live down lots of things that came before me in my family. And and I think I've done so. It seems like you and sure so have. And so it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's there, right. What are some of the greatest lessons you think you've learned through the process, the journey? Anything specific? You know, I, one thing just came to my mind that, you know, just particularly about like this business and about it, it is like we get to go to these fabulous events and and wear sparkly shoes and um, and a crown. We they, they have <laughs> <laughs> we'll literal crowns, crowns right? right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is all, you know, it is sort of our job and it is our, you know, even though it's a creative career, it's still a career. And um, I have an amazing friendships. I went to 14 schools, not because I was a bad girl, but we moved around and I was an adult in a young lady's body and I was unhappy and I, I want to go somewhere else. So anyway, I moved around and I have friends from everywhere mm -hmm. I went. Mm -hmm. And still, like, like now we have Facebook and it's great and all the social media, you can find those people. But I actually didn't need to go searching very far. They're always still around me. Mm -hmm. And I love that part of my life. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. My female, right. my sisters. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're so excited to watch your performance in honor yes. of you know, your sister who is the princess of all galaxies. And just knowing that your journey, you hold this 
this this divine feminine energy that's really, really holding a space for the consciousness of LA to evolve and you know grow and bloom into what we're really here to do, which is create art. Yeah. So thank you so much thank for all you. your work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a beautiful week. Stay tuned. We've got more on Good Morning La La Land when we come back.